I'm joined by Angela Knight, the chief executive of the British Bankers Association, who represents uh, the banks in this country. Angela, what do you make of this? Uh, not as bad as you feared, perhaps? Well, it's been well trailed, so it is approximately what we were expecting, actually. And it's on top of the regulation and changes that have already been made to uh, bankers' pay and bankers' bonuses, whereby that's been put into regulation. If a bonus is paid, a contractual bonus, then it's deferred for two, maybe three years, the majority of it, and the majority of it also paid in uh, shares and not in cash. So this is double whammy for the uh, bankers. So this is the discretionary, you. it's the last bit. Now, what we've done here in the UK is gone further and faster on this whole area of pay than any of the other uh, international centres, and much further than the majority, if not all, of the G20 countries. And it is an international business, and we do uh, operate in various centres around the world, and they are in competition with each other. And so we've got to be careful as a country, very, very careful now, that in handling this in the way that we've handled it, and we all understood it's, it's the run-up to a general election, that we don't start to put a doubt in people's minds about operating here and the stability and soundness of the UK as the world financial centre that it is. But the Prime Minister says that other countries will follow suit. They might, but I don't know anything more than the Chancellor as to whether they're going to do so or not, because governments are as competitive as the industry. And indeed, that is one of the reasons why we worry, because we know that others will start to see if they can't get a slice of that which is such a big contributor to the uh, tax take, to the coffers of the Treasury in this country, and of course an industry from which about a million jobs uh, stem. So £550 million, pounds, about $800 million is what the uh, Treasury says it's going to get from this, but of course it's discretionary bonuses only. It is. If do, you, do we have an idea of what proportion are contractual bonuses and therefore won't be covered? Is that figure uh, that the government hopes to raise from this uh, windfall tax, is that likely to be met? Well, uh, you have to ask the Chancellor that question, I'm afraid. And he did make it quite clear that, of course, putting a tax on in this way, which is probably it's, um, you know, mechanically the easiest way to apply a tax, could well have a consequential uh, effect in that some bonuses will not be paid. We'll just have to see. But it is one on top of another of other uh, tax changes. And it's the cumulative effect and the cumulative impact, not just on the companies and the individuals who work in them, but the perception of working here that worries us, especially as the key issues about financial stability, about how uh, the industry is run going forward, don't really relate to, to pay. Pay is, uh, is totemic, but the substantive issues lie elsewhere. Well, banks are dab hands at uh, getting uh, tax avoidance measures in place. Uh, are we just likely to see uh, bonuses, for example, made a little bit smaller this year and they'll get bigger bonuses next year because it is just a one-off tax. So this time next year you could just pay the person that what you were planning to pay them this year. Well in the end there's two things we've got to see. Uh, the first is what is the international standard on pay? You know I say again that this is an international industry and the second is we don't actually know what next year will bring. But are banks but going to be able to implement measures that will mean that actually they won't be hit as hard as the Chancellor is intending? Will they put tax avoidance measures in for example more bonuses next year, lower bonuses this year, so less tax. Uh, you, when you start to read what the Chancellor said and the details of which we have some but not all, he does talk about anti-avoidance measures, so we know that that's going to be there, that's the first thing. Second thing anyway, look, the industry is, is up to the plate for change. We're not being reluctantly dragged to alter. We have changed in very many ways, put in measures in other areas which are very important. There's new teams in place and the few banks that failed. The majority are handling this difficult situation very well. Angela Knight, Chief Executive of the British Bankers Association, thanks so much for joining Thank us. You.